Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Beyond Appium, Testing with Espresso in the Real Device Cloud. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You have joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select telephone in the audio pane, and the dial-in information will be displayed there for you. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane of your GoToWebinar control panel. You may send in your question at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during a Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. I would now like to introduce our speakers for today. Asaf Sar, Mobile Product Development Manager at Sauce Labs, and Clint Sprav, Mobile Product Marketing Director at Sauce Labs. Welcome, you guys. You now have the floor. All right. Well, thank you. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Clint Sprav, and I'm going to start the discussion. And what I'd like to do is, before we get into talking about um, Appium and some of the other items, I'd like to really get into some of the trends that are going on in uh, mobile uh, development and just kind of give you a basic understanding of why it's important for mobile testing. So now this statistic that you're seeing today shouldn't surprise anyone from Gardner. So by 2018, more than 50% of users will go to a tablet or smartphone first for all of their online activities. If you're anything like me, I currently do that today. My phone is pretty much my lifeline. So I typically go to my smartphone. I have every app that I use either for work or even for uh, recreational activities on my phone. So as we all know, the mobile device is really becoming that lead horse for pretty much all of uh, everyone's activities. Uh, next slide, please. But as you know, even though we typically use our mobile devices first, this is not a mobile only world. So it's mobile first, but not mobile only. Now, more than half of the world's web traffic comes from mobile devices. So as you can see here on this particular slide, 50% for mobile phones, another 5% for tablets and devices. <clears throat> if you throw in uh, some of the, the other things, such as the Internet of Things, such as like the Fitbit or Fitbit Blaze and uh, iWatch and things of that nature. But you also have to make sure that as you're building your testing strategy that you don't exclude the laptops and desktops because that's still 45% of the overall strategy. So as I talked about before, what I go to first is, and as many of you probably do today, is you lead with that cell phone. And it, just to give you an example why it's mobile first and not mobile only, some of you may be attending this webinar using GoToWebinar on your mobile device or cell phone or iPad or whatnot. And some of you may be uh, viewing this directly from your, your laptop. So as companies start to move into creating new apps and new applications directly, they're starting with mobile first, but they need to account for all other types of access to those applications. Next slide, please. So what is the impact of poor mobile quality? Now, there are a lot of impacts, as you can see from here, user frustration and so forth. And this is not only for consumer apps, but it can also be for apps that you use internally. So if you can imagine a company that needs to save money by managing expense reports and they have an internal app, well, if that is not a good user experience or if it's not working correctly, it will cost the company money because they need to be able to have more efficient uh, applications in order to run their business. And some statistics that you're seeing over to the side, like a four, four and a half star app is downloaded 3.7 times more than a three and a half star app. Now that's huge in terms of uh, usability. And then 79% of users will only retry an app once or twice if it fails to work the first time. Now, we've all seen this, and it varies from phone vendor to phone vendor. That same app could work great on the iPhone. It may have trouble with different versions of Android or even earlier versions of iOS. So there's a huge impact to the bottom line for organizations if that app has poor mobile quality. Next slide. The challenges are real. So if you take this from a mobile testing perspective, and most of you probably are doing some sort of uh, mobile application development or mobile application testing. So the three challenges that most, uh, most people will encounter are basically device fragmentation, various app types, and geographically dispersed users. 
So if we look at device fragmentation, as I talked about earlier, you have different types of devices with different OSs. So the various, you know, Samsung Galaxy phones, the LGs, um, all the different types of Android devices that are out there, as well as the different iOS uh, devices. So there's so much fragmentation that it makes mobile testing very complex, especially for those organizations that have inherited the testing uh, activities for new mobile initiatives. And then you have the various app types, such as web, hybrid, and native apps. And this could be also responsive design web applications, as well as progressive design web applications. And then you have the third challenge of geographically dispersed users. Now, this could mean either having issues with translations of that applications into different languages or also different um, connection speeds and so forth. So you need to make sure that when you're developing that mobile app that now you have to account for not only users within your region, but users worldwide that may access that application. So this makes mobile application testing very, very difficult. And if you think about the actual speed of testing, uh, mobile applications, it becomes even more of a challenge when you try to implement DevOps or some sort of continuous integration and continuous delivery process uh, with your, uh, within your uh, mobile app development cycle. Right next. So what I'd like to do before we dive into test automation frameworks, I'd like to, uh, we'd like to take a little survey um, to really get an idea and understanding of your usage of automation frameworks. So what you'll find, and this is probably downloaded to you right now, is a quick poll. What mobile automation frameworks do you use? So you can select one of the following, either Appium, Espresso, Calabash, XCUI test, or if you're not using a framework. So we'll give you uh, about 30 seconds to a minute to fill that out. Also, I'd like to point out that um, even if you select no automation framework, you can also select that if you are using possibly another framework that isn't listed here. It could be a homegrown framework. It could be some new emerging technology that isn't as common as some of the, as the, uh, the top four listed here. So we'll wait for that poll to close as everyone puts in their answers. All right, so we see that 63% of you are using Appium, and about 3% of you are using Espresso. Now, uh, it's amazing that the big part is that no automation framework is used. So I'll take that to either you're not using a framework at all, you might even be using a, a homegrown framework. So as you can see, Appium is still the, the most dominant framework used for, auto, for mobile automation, uh, mobile test automation. Um, but what we're going to discuss is not only Appium, but we're going to also get into what that means for test automation with Espresso and why this is one of the up and coming uh, frameworks that are being used by uh, developers all around. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, um, Asaf. So Asaf? Yeah, thank you very much, Clint. Um, so thank you for, for the intro and the, the um, introduction on, on the strategy. And as, as you said, the, the, um, the message around the pool and the results is that Appium is really the more dominant in the market, but we do see gain in adoption when it comes to the native frameworks, which is Espresso on the Android side and XCI test on, on iOS. And this leads me to the question, why do we need a mobile automation framework and what mobile automation frameworks are there in the market? So besides Appium and Espresso, there are another set of frameworks which are common in the market, which are not homegrown, like Calabash, something that started by Xamarin, adopted by Microsoft following the acquisition, but Microsoft has announced that they are dropping the support for Calabash and the community is trying to understand at the moment whether this is something that will continue as an open source, or something that the community will support, but at the moment there are a lot of uncertainty around it. Uh, another framework is Salandroid, uh, which started, it, it's a very kind of like um, several years within the market. Salandroid is for Android, Selenium for Android. It's kind of like some of the foundation, and that was resulted with Appium eventually, and uh, we have Robotium, which is a native framework, very similar to Espresso, um, but this framework is a little bit obsolete and old, and, and people are dropping for that. But it doesn't matter which framework you're using, you have the mission, 
that you would like to automate your application, be it a native application running on mobile or a web application running on the browser in your mobile device like Safari or uh, the Chrome browser or the built-in browser that is coming with the different Android devices, you need to have some sort of an automation framework. And if we'll dive into those, um, let's focus on the two that are important for our discussion today. The first one is, is Appium. So um, it's amazing to see that 30% are not using automation. It might be at a point where a team is just testing manually and they have several local devices or they are testing on a cloud-based uh, solution where they have access to different devices and they are doing manual testing. And many teams are just using local emulators connected to their environment or simulators, depends on which operating system we are dealing with. And Appium, in fact, is the open source. It's kind of like the de facto uh, standard open source tool for automating both native, web, and hybrid applications. And the good thing about Appium, one of the benefits is that it fits both iOS and Android. These are the dominant platform platforms within uh, the mobile space and both iOS and Android are fully supported both on native application, web application, and hybrid application. What are the advantages uh, of Appium? So with Appium you can, as I said, automate native web and hybrid application. You can test uh, with Appium against real devices and emulators and simulators. Uh, you can test also on software devices, you can test on real devices, and as I will similar demo later on, on uh, Espresso, but it also applies to Appium, and in addition you can test it on local emulators and simulators, or you can test on cloud-based emulators and simulators. Appium is based on a remote web driver framework, and as we know, remote web driver, which is uh, the same way as, as Selenium, with remote web driver, you basically can develop and um, code your, your test in any common language that has a driver like uh, Java, Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, etc. It doesn't matter because it's a client-server approach and the client can, you can develop and, and execute tests in any of these languages and this is something which is very, very powerful and a strong benefit for, for Apple. As I said, it's a single framework for both iOS and, and Android. So in theory, you can develop scripts and have different page objects to identify what is the target device. And you can create a framework and a, a testing suite that is one testing suite, but eventually will be targeted on both iOS and Android, different uh, operating system versions, different devices, different models but it's just a matter of how you identify the different objects of your application, be that iOS native object or be that Android. And when it comes to uh, web testing, it's just a matter of which browser on which device you are launching and you're targeting. And as we know, Appium has a huge community and a very large open source community that is also uh, supported by Source Labs and you can feel really comfortable when it comes to Appium. Moving forward, what is Espresso? And that's our topic for today. So in general, Espresso is a test automation framework for Appium, for Android, which allows you to build UI test to test your application. Okay, so Espresso is a little bit different than what Appium is. Appium is targeted on the UI layer. It's uh, based on your test sequence, what you would like to, to automate. Espresso is more kind of a white box testing approach. It's uh, more of a unit test. But the unit test we know we are not focusing on the UI layer. Espresso comes and fits into that. It provides you with, uh, to the test developer the ability to code and develop white box kind of tests that really utilizes the implementation of the application under test. And I will show how uh, an Espresso project looks like within Android Studio and you can see that it lives within your application projects. You have your code for the actual application and you have your test code for testing the application. What are the advantages of using Espresso? In general, it is very easy to develop uh, 
tests for Espresso. We know one of the challenges that we have for Appium is the setup, the test setup. If you would like to log and um, set up a local instance, a local server, and the configuration, you need to read through a lot of documentation and set up an old server locally. And um, with, with Espresso, it's basically integrated with Android Studio. Once you download from Google the Android Studio and install it, you get everything ready. And as a developer and a tester who are using the same environment, you can enhance your application development environment with, with tests. Once it is integrated with Android, it provides you with automatic updates. It automatically updates uh, the Espresso framework, and in addition, it also provides latest and greatest updates of uh, Android operating system. So if you are testing a beta version of Android, or if you are testing the latest release version of Android, it also means that the framework, the Espresso, automatically supports any version all the way back with backward compatibility and forward, you can ensure and you can guarantee that once Android will update the Espresso or the Android version, you will get also updates uh, for the framework and it will be supported in there. Since this is Android, we know the development is done in, in Java and the same applies here. You develop your test in Java using JUnit and JUnit is a common testing framework. The two most uh, common are JUnit and, and uh, TestNG, and this is fully supported. And since this is fully integrated with the Android development environment, it means that the Espresso tests are basically CI, continuous integration, and continuous delivery ready. You can enhance your testing landscape and take the test that you developed to run locally, and you can integrate it into your continuous integration development lifecycle and, and uh, CI chain. Another very good benefit and advantage of Espresso, it is super fast. We know that UI automation might be slow in some cases because once you execute your test, you would like to uh, the test to first allocate the object on screen. Once it is there, it performs the actions or the change uh, on this screen. And when it comes to Espresso, it is really, really fast because it is compiled as an application that runs side by side with your native application. Then it provides support for that and the actual execution is super fast and it's um, the test execution usually ends much faster than it is on, on Appium, for example. Another huge benefit is the automatic synchronization. Everyone who develops UI automation knows that it's very challenging within your test script to do the object identification, to do the synchronization. There are some slips in many cases within your test code, or there are some wait for an element to be available on screen or to be visible and then only to do that. So in many frameworks, you need to synchronize and handle that uh, yourself as a test developer. Here you have automatic synchronization, so there is no wait within your code. Once an object is expected to be there, the automation framework will automatically execute the test step as you are required. This immediately results in much less flakiness, so you have no fragile test. Synchronization is there. In addition, once the test starts, it also ensures that the activity, the actual application is started and before the test runs and the application and the tests are fully synchronized and execute together. Moving forward, I would like to present and um, move away from the slides and present to you with the live demo of how you are developing your espresso test, how you're executing that on Source Labs on the real device cloud and the different capabilities and the different options as we have there. Moving to Android Studio, we can see in here this is an Android project. That's my application in this case. It's a basic application that has two screens and Source Labs Espresso demo. It has a label in here, a text field and some buttons to update it. That's the application. We have our uh, development code for the application. That's the main activity. Once you type something in, in the text field, you apply that, the labels are changed. Uh, and in addition, you see this is my application code, and the test code sits right next to it. 
And eventually, the result of that is an application that you can either build the application and execute it, or you can build the test. Once you are execute the test, it actually executes the test and the application. Once you build the application, the result of that are two applications, basically. And we saw uh, preliminary questions before the webinar has already started, whether Espresso is, uh, when will Espresso support iOS? And this is something that I want to make it clear right now. Espresso is for Android and Android only. There is no uh, plans for Google to support Espresso for iOS. The equivalent of Espresso for uh, iOS, it is the framework which is called XUI test, but we are not in the scope of this discussion. Espresso is for Android only. So as I said, once you build the application, this is my application which was built, and when you build the test, you are also ended up. So we have two APKs in here, and these APKs are basically, you can only execute and launch your application, or you can, in order to execute the test application, you deploy both on the, both on the device, you launch the APK of the test, and it automatically synchronizes and executes it along there. Okay, so moving forward, I would like to execute these um, two applications and, and test on the device. Switching in here, I have um, the test object, which is the brand for Source Labs for the Real Device Cloud. And within a test object, you have ability to develop and execute tests on Robotium, Espresso, and Appium. Focusing on Espresso, the way you started with Espresso, basically you upload like we do in here. If you're uploading your application and you also upload your test. So in this case, this is, this is the application that I have built. This is the Espresso demo that I have built. And in addition, I would like to execute my test. And in order to execute the test, I need to upload my test. Upload my test means I'm uploading the APK of the test. As we have seen, we have the APK for the application, and we have the APK for the test itself, okay? Once you upload your test, you create a test suite. In this case, I have a sample test suite in here, and this test suite can have previous results, or you can actually execute it. Going back, if I'm uploading the application itself, Let's take this application, this testing application, that's Espresso IPK. Once it is uploaded, I can give it a name. And uh, these are the different activities, the different methods, the actual actions, the tests that apply, and these are the tests that as a de test developer, I have de developed in, there, in here. I can specify whether I want to get a notification, and the good thing about it, once you are uploading the application, that you can now execute it against one Android device, or you can actually execute it against multiple devices in parallel. And this is very, very powerful. So in this case, I have all the devices that are available for me as a user on the test object cloud. I can select several devices to perform some filtering. So for example, I want to execute on this Pixel device, I want to take this Huawei device, and the LG B20, the OnePlus 5, Samsung Galaxy. So you can select as many devices as you can access and run in parallel. These are the devices that, that are selected. I can apply that, and I can actually start and run this suite, okay? I give it a name, I save this, and once I will click on Run, the suite will start and will be executed. Okay, so now this is start. There are four tests, as we saw, and I selected six devices, so I have tw 24 tests. These are the all devices that are currently running. We can see they are all running in parallel, and as they progress, we can see the status of this one. This is the one that is now running. I can have several suites running in parallel, and as they progress, you can see some devices are in the US, some devices are in Europe, and you can see the progress as we move forward. So we can see two success and in here and this one, and they are progressing, okay? Once they will progress and they will be completed, we can see in here it's almost completed. I have very detailed analysis that I can perform on this one, okay? Going forward, that's the run that I have. 
and let's wait for it to finish in a while. And once this is done, it is almost, yeah, it is completed. I have the test runs. So let's take, for example, the Google Pixel, okay? On the Google Pixel, we see this was Android 712. This one was 711, this was on 70, et cetera, et cetera. So on, let's say I want to analyze this test. I dive into that. I see that all my actions are actually uh, successful. I can dive into those. I can understand this is the Motorola Nexus and this is the characteristics of the device. And this is the Espresso application that I was running. This was successful. I can click on the video and I can get a video analysis and a report, as we can see, this is the actual method that was running in there. And I have full access to the device log. And you can, within device log, have very detailed understanding and analysis of how it goes and perform that. Now let's switch to a test where one of the tests that I have a failure, for example, on this one, which was running about an hour ago. And in this case, I have run the same test against these 10 devices. And I can see here that on this one, I had four failures, and I want to do an analysis on that. I will dive into that on, on this test, and I will go to the exception, and I will see that the following exception was strong. It was actually looking for this text, but it doesn't match. So let's look at the device uh, video on the actual execution and try to understand what actually happened there, okay? So if you can see in here, it was, Hello, Sauce Labs RDC, Espresso Web something, where it was actually should be Espresso Webinar participant, and something was wrong with this typo. And immediately, once I execute the test, I can do the video execution. I can also take a look at the log and understand exactly what the exception. And in here, it is clearly says that it was supposed to be Espresso Webinar participants, but something happened on this device while actually on others, we can see that it was fully successful. So playing back the pixel movie, I can see that the video will actually say that Espresso webinar participants, and it wasn't the type of error as was seen before, okay? So as I demonstrate in here, you can launch your tests directly from the UI where you create a suite. These suites get different parameters of what are the actual APK, what tests are there, what devices you would like to execute. In this case, these are the 10 devices, and you can click on the actual run and execute, okay? Moving forward, and you have your automation, you have your suites, uh, you have your test suite available for you to execute, and you want to move forward and not just manually execute it, you want to have it within your development environment, within your continuous integration. And I, as a developer, I have my application, I do some changes, I integrate it with my team member, and once it is deployed, I want this to automatically happen as part of the continuous integration cycle. Doing so, there is an Espresso Runner available, which we provide for you, and this Espresso Runner is available freely within uh, GitHub, and this Espresso Runner basically executes the test directly from your environment, either for your local machine, or within your uh, continuous integration environment, you can create a job and execute it. This uh, Espresso Runner accepts several parameters in this case. It accepts my runner, it accepts the application under test, and it accepts the actual test. It provides the username and password for your test object account, what is the project as we have seen, and what is the suite as we saw the suite number. Executing this one is actually really simple. You can execute this runner from the command line once you set up the parameters for your test object user and password. And when you are launching this, as I have just done it from the command line, it will actually run now on these devices going forward in here. Into this suite, it was suite number 11. You can see that this one is running. The actual suite is running. This one, the suite. And this one is running now from the command line. So the command line is executing on my local machine, running on the cloud, and execute against devices that are hosted on the cloud, either in the US or in the European data center, as we can see in here. And they are all running in parallel. And this is very, very easy. Once it is executed, you will get the results directly 
into the command line and you will get the links to the report in here. And as a next step, what I will show you um, in, a, in a while is that you can take this and integrate it fully into your continuous integration into Jenkins. You can create a Jenkins job, apply this runner, set up your test suite, define what devices you would like to execute, and it will run on them, against them, in the cloud using your local Jenkins or your system Jenkins within the team. Okay, so this suite is running, it will be completed soon, and we can see this is the latest suite 2034, that's the one that was running, and we see again the same failures as we saw that are applied to this uh, Huawei device, that it always fails against it. It will soon finish and I will get a report. Okay, this is the actual execution. Moving forward, I want to take this one and integrate it into Jenkins. So I've created a very basic Jenkins job in here. And this is Presso Webinar Jenkins. If we look at the configuration, again, it gets my test object username password, and then it goes and executes the runner, okay? Launching that is very simple. You start with the test execution. You click on that, set the password if it's a parameter, and it will start the actual execution and run it. If we look at the console, we can see that it's progressing. Moving in here, we will see that the actual job is now running. Okay? So I have an execution. I can do it for my local ID. I can go for the web application of test object from the console. I can upload my application. I can upload my test project. I can define one or more devices if I want many devices running in parallel. Source Labs provide you with devices running on two clouds, so you can test it on different geolocation, on different network settings, on different capabilities, on different devices, resolution, operating system versions. Once it is done, you can just execute it either from here or from your command line or from Jenkins or any other CI system that you are using, and you will get the results also fully integrated into Jenkins, or you will have the results directly visible and available in here. Okay, as this is still running, it will finish. In this case, the HTC device was actually had a failure, and I can dive into that, do an analysis, and understand, okay, what was the failure? Again, it is this thing that is related to typing the text on this device. Okay, so we can see in here, this is just how it actually happens, and we can get the exception. Okay, this is finishing. This one also, this is the command line execution that we have executed. And we can see in here that I have a downloadable zip with all the report, with the results artifact, I can get an XML. With the test results, I can get an XML with the actual zip file and the video. Let's move in here and take a look how it actually looked like. So yeah, put it in here. Yeah, it's downloaded. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, you're back on. Yeah, sorry, well, go to webinar has crossed on me. Uh, so let me share my screen again. Sarah, can you please uh, grant me sharing its uh, set?
Microsoft, do you have presenter rights now? No, not yet. Okay, just a minute. There you go. We see your screen. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Sorry about it. So suddenly go to webinar has crashed. Okay. So it was in here when I just extracted this zip file that I downloaded and I have the log file and also the actual video that I can play and see how it actually goes. And I can do it from my CI or I can go back to the application and perform this one and the analysis from there. Okay. Okay, so I think that concludes the demo and we can move into questions. Thanks, Asaf. That was great. And we've got a few. Um, I think a common thread is that uh, we've had several folks ask, uh, what are the big reasons for choosing Espresso over Appium? So as, as I mentioned, there, there are several differences between Espresso and Appium. The good thing about Espresso um, is that it is super fast. If you are looking for a very, very fast framework, Espresso is the right thing about it. But Espresso has a disadvantage that it is only Android. Espresso is more targeted towards developers because you are developing white box kind of testing, UI based testing, which are web white box. You are doing that from the development environment where you have your application code. In many cases, there is a split between development and testing, and testing just take the black box. Appium is more black box testing. You get the APK, and within the APK, you deploy it, and you develop your test and execute it. In order to develop on, Appi on Espresso, you need to have the source code and need to develop it attached to the source code. So it's more um, targeted to white box and black box testing, although they both perform UI-based automation. Thank you. So uh, somewhat related, we have several questions on uh, identifying elements in Espresso and how do we address page object models in Espresso or how does Espresso handle page object models? Espresso are, if you look at the, at the code of Espresso, you can see in here that the, the code is basically fully aligned what we have in here. This is in here. This is the code and the view and the actual methods are aligned with your actual pages that you have. We have two pages in here, the main activity and the show activity. As we can see in here, these are the two pages and the actual objects are attached to it. So it's kind of like built in to that. Very good. Um, we did have a question about whether or not Espresso can be used for uh, Android applications that have been developed using the Ionic framework, or is it uh, purely for uh, native Android applications? It is for native Android, and it's also, all, all, uh, also important to understand that when you develop tests for Android with Espresso, you live within the context of the application. So this is my application under test. That's the only thing that I can automate. Unlike Appium, that you can go out of the content of the application, you can switch between application, you can go into the, uh, the settings of the device, and you can do configuration, change Wi-Fi, do another actions around it. Appium is targeted around full system level control, while Espresso is only within the context of your Very good, thank you. Um, we did also have a question that I think relates to the real device cloud, and that is what happens if the device is not available? If the device is not available, we have a queuing mechanism. It means that your test can wait 15 minutes for the next um, device to be released, <clears throat> and you can execute on that. In addition, on our public cloud, we have hundreds of different devices that you can target your execution against either um, a specific device, 
you can specify device characteristics and one of them will be executed. So if, for example, you want an Android version 7.1, you can just look for any 7.1 which is available and the test will be executed on that. If you want to look for an exact model, like give me Google Pixel running 7.1 so you can target these specifics and go on there. On any case, there will be a queuing. On the public cloud, it is on the first come, first serve basis, but your test will be queued up until 15 minutes. On the private cloud, we offer customers private devices, means they are only of, for this account, and you can ensure that your devices are available and signed to your tests. Related question is, can we test multiple physical devices in parallel using Espresso Android Studio locally? Uh, in other words, not using the device cloud. To test, lo to, if you test locally, you just execute on one device. So in this case, locally, for example, I have uh, this uh, emulator. It can, I, it can also be um, a local device connected with the USB cable. Once I will execute my test, it will only execute in here. If you want to do automation in parallel, you need to use uh, Source Labs Real Device Cloud. Very good. Uh, we do have a question about whether or not it's possible to integrate Cucumber with Espresso and I guess other BDD approaches. Since this is a unit test and it uh, um, comes as, as an APK, you need to have a specific runner to launch it. BDD Cucumber based uh, automation are looking to execute on the source code of the device of, of your test which is a JUnit or a test and G based uh, testing. So you cannot, you need some runner that knows how to launch this APK, look into the different activities and execute them. Very good. Uh, we did have a question early on about, um, we got quite a few rolling in, um, but uh, it related to your thoughts on the upcoming Appium Espresso driver. So the Appium Espresso driver is similar, like we have the XCUI runner and we have the, uh, the Cylindroid runner, different uh, drivers around it. So the Appium Espresso runner will be executed to that. So you develop your script in Appium and it will launch and run based on the Espresso activities below. Very similar to what Appium is using XUI test to do automation using the XUI test engine that is running on the device. All right, very good. Uh, we do have a question about the depth of uh, uh, knowledge uh, with regard to knowing Java. Do you need to have deep Java knowledge for Espresso or is basic, uh, would basic knowledge be enough? Basic knowledge will be enough. Uh, it's very basic and it's very easy to develop scripts um, for Espresso. As we can see in the code, this is a test method that identifies the different objects and perform sending text against it. Okay, and this is another object which is has the ID change text and it performs a click. So it's very basic and, and minimal to look into that. Very good. You know, we've got enough questions coming in that uh, I think we'll have to create several blog posts. Um, I want to be respectful of everyone's time, uh, so I will uh, ask two more for you. Uh, one is, uh, we've had several questions about data uh, parameterization. Um, is there, basically, how do you uh, handle data, data parameterization of, of, with Espresso? Yeah, so you can see in here, for, for example, this is the string to be typed, which is a parameter. You can define these parameters from an external file or for XML or for environment variable, and you can inject this into your script. It's very much doable. Okay. And uh, lastly, we'll say, uh, does the source code need to follow any particular architecture to implement Espresso? No. So you, you will have your project, which is the application project, and on the application project you add an Espresso test. Onto that, the IDE, the Android Studio, will handle all the dependencies and the requirements, and you can just immediately start develop scripts. 
One, one, one important thing to note, we have, let's look in this one, the test code and the project which I demonstrate is available on GitHub. We will also share the links as we have in there. And this is the Espresso Gradle example. You can download this one, you can clone this repo, and you can start developing scripts and tests based on this example and know how it, uh, how it goes. Um, we have this one also, like these are the links that we are providing for that. Okay, well, thank you. As I say, uh, we do have uh, a number of other questions that uh, I think would be best addressed in a uh, follow-up uh, blog post. Um, but I want to thank you, uh, Asaf and Clint, for your time today. Uh, as we mentioned at the outset, we will be sending out an email with a link to the recording and the uh, slides, and we'll also include links to the uh, resources that uh, Asaf just mentioned as well. With that, I will bid everyone adieu, and we will see you uh, at our next webinar. Thank you.